Happy Pancake Day! Oh, I should have been looking what I was doing. Hello and welcome to Cooking with Packet Mix. I'm your host Chris Morphew and today we will be making light and fluffy cranberry and orange organic pancakes. And as if watching me make pancakes from a packet mix wasn't enthralling enough, I am also going to give you a brief history of pancakes. Let's begin. Pour contents into a large mixing bowl. Done. This might not be large enough. So apparently, according to my abundant online research, the first pancakes were made like 30,000 years ago. Well, if you can call it a pancake. Archaeologists have analyzed starch grains on 30,000 year old grinding tools, which suggests that Stone Age chefs were making flour out of ferns and cattails, as in the plant, not actual cat's tails, because that would not be flour. They guessed that this flour was likely mixed with water and baked on a hot, possibly greased rock, which to me sounds more like a dirty cattail biscuit and less like a pancake, so let's move on. Make a well in the center and add two small eggs and one and a half cups of milk. Where's my well making tool? Well done. Get it? Because it's a well. So anyway, as history moves on, it seems like different versions of pancakes start cropping up everywhere. So in ancient Greece, for example, there are references to more pancakey kind of pancakes found in some 5th century BC poetry. Now my Greek's not fantastic, but I think it says, roses are red, violets are blue, pancakes are Greek, so are you. This seems like a lot of milk. How many pancakes am I making here? Do, 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 do. Master chef. Whisk vigorously. This is not a large enough bowl for vigorous whisking. <laughs> I'm so good at cooking. Apparently, the consensus among food historians, which that sounds like a pretty good job, is that the first actually pancakey pancakes were made in ancient Rome in around the first century AD. They were called alita dolcia, which means another sweet in Latin and which I am probably pronouncing wrong. Calling something like this another sweet seems kind of short-sighted in the naming department, doesn't it? Like I imagine the emperor calling in the royal baker and being like, hey, I really like that honey cake that you made for me yesterday. What do you call that? Uh, sweet? Right, and what about these flat cakes you made in a pan? Another sweet? And what about these smaller cup-sized cakes? What do you call them? An a another other sweet? Anyway, apparently these another sweets were made with milk, flour, and eggs, so basically pancakes. Then rest the mixture for a few minutes. Shh. Shh. Fast forward to the present and apparently to celebrate their 60th anniversary, the International House of Pancakes in America has just run this promotion where they're serving all you can eat pancakes for $3.99, which raises the question, could I buy a ticket to the United States, pay my $3.99 and eat enough pancakes to make money on that transaction? And for those of you who for some reason think you're above $3.99 all you can eat pancakes, first of all, come on. And secondly, the Radisson Blue Edwardian Hotel in Manchester might have something that's a bit more up your alley. At 800 pounds per serve, that's 1400 Australian dollars, the world's most expensive pancake uses three different batters, flavored with beetroot, chive, and Dom Perignon champagne. There's also lobster and mussels laid up inside, and it's all topped off with a swirl of beluga caviar cream cheese. The dish is served with a side of extra caviar, gazpacho shots, and a champagne hollandaise sauce. I'm not sure if this is still available, but honestly, I think I prefer two or three hundred visits to IHOP. Anyway, I think that's enough resting now. Wake up, pancakes. Why don't you join me in the kitchen? Oh, hi there. I didn't hear you come in. Just kidding, I did. Happy Pancake Day! Off to a very good start. So, this video will indeed come out on Shrove Tuesday, Pancake Day, which marks the day before the beginning of Lent. And apparently, the traditional reason for having pancakes on Shrove Tuesday is to use up all the ingredients that you weren't going to eat during Lent while you were fasting. The whole Lent thing hasn't really been a part of my church tradition growing up, but I have found it really useful in recent years to give up something just as a way of like refocusing on what is important in the lead up to Easter. So this year I'm going to do what I did last year, which was give up social media for the weeks leading up to Easter, just because I think I waste too much time on it. So I will still keep uploading videos, hopefully Tuesdays and Fridays, but I will not be promoting them on anything. We'll see if that makes any difference. See if I still can get those double digit views. Oh, ruined. Pancake update, everything going great. It tastes pretty good though. 
That's better. Now we're not being completely incompetent in the kitchen. If it, oh. There, done. I'm a very good cook. The end. Bye. End screen time. Subscribe here. Other, uh, other videos there and there and there. And I will see you on Friday. Maybe.